lead. Now, this man go all the world, around the world and do what he do at schools, everywhere I've met him at multiple conferences from Miami to Tampa to Orlando, but he's based out of Atlanta. Then he got his hype man coming up to introduce him. So you got Hotep from Hustle University. I wish that music would have kept playing though. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Play it one more time, DJ. Turn it up. How many y'all hustlers out here? If you a hustler, put your hand up. Yeah! You a hustler or a customer? Travel the country with my big brother Hotel. Y'all say Hotel. Hotel. All right, not Hotel. <laughs> Listen, this man does his thing everywhere he goes. I'm gonna let him tell y'all his story. But one thing I want y'all to understand: you either gonna be the hustler or the customer. Which one y'all gonna be? The you gonna either be the hustler or the customer. Which one you gonna be? Okay then, that's right. So listen, my homie, I already know he good cause he like energy, right? I already know he good cause y'all been crazy right now. But let's do it one more time while I introduce my big brother, Hotel president and founder of Hustle University. Come on down, bro. Make some noise, y'all. Come on. Make some noise. All right, one, two, one, two. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. I said good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Oh, man. It's such a pleasure. Let me stay away from that side. It's such a pleasure to be here with you guys this afternoon. I just came over from Orlando. I was at the Education Justice Conference speaking to teachers, speaking to school administrators, a lot of adults, a lot of old folks, you know what I'm saying? I think it's kind of boring and tired of talking to old people all day, you know what I'm saying? So it's nice and refreshing, as you see my partner Red, to be amongst young people, young energy. So let me give you a little quick background. My name is Hotep. For those that were wondering, Hotep is an Egyptian name. It's an African name. It means peace. I'm named after Imhotep, the builder of the first pyramids. So Imhotep means he who walks in peace. Hotep itself simply means peace. So when I say Hotep, you say peace. Hotep. Peace. Hotep. Peace. Peace. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, okay. Just check it. Just check it. All right, so listen, I own an organization called Hustle University. It is the place where we say the scholars make dollars. And I'm so serious about this. It's the scholars that make the dollars. I don't care what you see on TV. I don't, I don't care what you think you heard from someone else. Indeed, it is the scholars that make dollars. And one thing I really believe in is the power of entrepreneurship. Being a boss. We got any bosses in this room? Where my bosses at? Okay, all right. Yes, I believe in entrepreneurship. I believe in being in control of my own situation. See, I believe entrepreneurship is the key to freedom for all people. In short, it's either ownership or it's slaveship. Let me say that again. 
See, I believe entrepreneurship is the key to freedom for all people. In short, either it's ownership or it's what? Slave ship. So the question is, what ship are you riding? Huh? What ship do you want to ride? I'm on this ownership here. You see, they coming down right here. They're hearing the talk. They're hearing the hustlers talk right here. They say, yes, I'm on that ownership. Yes, sir. All right, so listen, I want to share with you something that I've learned that I've come to uh, develop over the last 10 plus years. It was based off a book that I had written called The Hustlers' Ten Commandments. And it's so appropriate that we be at this workshop here, at this conference here, refuse to lose. Because yes. one thing I learned, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is that life is a game. And you need to understand, so I don't care what no one else tells you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Can I tell you the truth today? Yes or no? Yeah. Can I keep it real with you? Yeah. Can I keep it 100 with you? Yeah. What's wrong with this side of the room? Hold on, do I need to stand? Yeah. What's going on over here? Just, yeah. What's going on? Hold on, it's, it's over here. It's like love over here. What's going on with this side of the room? Yeah. Right, okay, okay. All right. I'm going to try and give you a little energy. I just don't want the mic to, to black out, okay? So I'm with y'all, listen, let y'all know, I'm with y'all here too, but I can't stand on this side because of the speakers, all right? All right, so, you know, I've learned this valuable lesson. I want you guys to listen to what I'm saying because this is gonna change somebody's life and for someone in this room, it'll save your life. Right? I've learned life is a game, much like a video game that some of you play. Who here plays video games? Raise your hand and play video games. All right, so I want you to think about this for a moment. When you play those video games, who is in control? You. you. And much like the video games that you play each and every day, life is much like that. You hold the controls to your life. You are in control. You have the power to go left, right, up and down. Just like any game, there's winners and losers. In any game, in just like the game called life, you have winners and you have losers. You have people that's winning. I'm talking about people that's getting money. People that get the things that they want out of this world. They get to travel. They have power. They are able to achieve their goals. But unfortunately, you have too many other people that are losing. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know I refuse to lose. You see, I refuse to lose. And you know what? What's, what's most important to me is, you know what? I'm tired of going around this country, going around the world, looking at people who look like me losing. Right? Too many people who look like me just losing. I'm tired of seeing it. It's real personal for me. Right? You see, I know people that's losing money. I know people that's losing their freedom. And what's worse than losing your freedom? Losing your life. Raise your, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know somebody that's lost, that's lost their life too soon. Raise your hand. Raise your see? So this is for them, right? For all those people that lost their life too soon, that lost their freedom too soon, that's out here losing this money. I refuse to lose, ladies and gentlemen. The question is, though, I don't know about you. So you ask, you can only answer this question, which type of person are you? Are you winning or are you losing? See, I play this game to win. I play this game to win. I'm so serious about this. I'm so serious about my hustle. I refuse to lose. So let me give you a quick background about myself. Like some of you in this room and like the brothers in the back, I started in the music industry back in the mid-90s. I wanted to be a rapper. For some of you, you guys might remember a guy named Big Daddy Kane. Who remembers Big Daddy Kane? Oh, my older folks, right? I used to want to be Big Daddy Kane, right? So I thought I was going to be the greatest rapper since Big Daddy Kane and Rock Kim. Remember, I put out an album called uh, an Audio Biography. My first company, when I got into entrepreneurship, my first company was called Skinny Man Productions. You see the logo right there, right? See, that's the same logo I wear around my chain to this day. It's my humble beginnings as a boss, as a owner, right? But see, music wasn't enough for me. See, I learned, for some of us, music is for some, but for others, I've learned that music ain't for them, or music is just the beginning. So for me, music was just the beginning. You see, I said, you know what, I could do more with this music. So I started getting into filmmaking. I put out my first film in 2005. It was called Independent Doing Major Things. Red didn't tell you, but we're based out of Atlanta. So we're down here from Atlanta. Now, see, in 2005, things were really popping. Still popping in ATL now, but in 2005, that's when things were really starting to pop. I met a lot of, uh, a lot of celebrities, a lot of artists, Outkast, Young Jeezy, T.I., all these people were coming out of the ATL, right? So I put out a film called Independent Doing Major Things to document what was happening in the city. And that thing started popping off for me. In that film, I created something called The Hustlers Ten Commandments. I wrote the book and things started taking off on a whole nother level. I met a lot of famous people. People you guys might be familiar with. That dude right there all got excited. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you start off with the song. Right? So listen. Can, can I keep it real with you? Can I keep it real? 
it real with you, yes or no? Can I keep it 100 with you? You see, it's one thing for me to tell a story. I like to show the story. Listen, it's 2006. I wrote the book, The Hustler's 10, in 2006. Rick Ross came out with the song, Every Day I'm Hustling. I met Rick Ross. He said, yo, Hotep, I like what you're doing with this hustle movement. He endorsed my book, and things started taking off for me. I couldn't tell you. I mean, everybody started getting excited. Actors and actresses that you see on TV. People watch Rock and Rock. Y'all know this guy right here? Listen, you see, a lot of people don't know. I told you it's the scholars that make what? The scholars that make what? See, everybody knows the secret ingredient is reading for success for all people. And these people are out. Y'all know this lady right here? You see her on TV. Now, you shouldn't be watching the show, but my point is, y'all heard of the Browns? Y'all seen the Browns before? I met the Browns. I met her. Oh, man. Let me tell you. Can I tell you two stories today, yes or no? Listen, Usher got excited. Now, again, this is an old picture. See, because this is back in 2006 when things started off for me. I'm taking it back in time. Usher heard about these hustlers taking marriage that I'm about to share with you, right? He heard about it, he said, Hotel, I have a youth camp. Much like you guys here, he has a camp in Atlanta called, uh, I forget the name of the camp. In any case, he got excited about this Hustlers, Ten Commandments, this movement that we had with Hustle University. He said, come talk to our young people. Just started expanding. Raymond Simone got excited. Master P started endorsing the work. I opened a store in Atlanta, Georgia. And yes, at Hustle University, we make what? Money! We are back. Man, listen, I love my I don't know about you. Raise, who, who likes money up in here? See, at Hustle University, we make our own money at Hustle University. But let me tell you a true story. See, it wasn't always like this for me, though. Like, things are good right now. Things are real good at Hustle U, but it wasn't always like this. See, my journey was that of the individual that can never find a way. I had to learn to do what? Make a way. Make a way. That's what I had to learn. Let me tell you something. See, this game is, 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 is this called, this life is a game. You got to learn how to play. But if you play the game, play to what? Win. Play to what? Win. Play to win, because I refuse to what? Ooh. So I play this game to win, but I learned that it's not always easy, and sometimes if you can't find a way, you have to make your own way. And that's what I was doing, because when I was in the music industry, listen, I wanted a record deal, truth be told, I wanted a record deal, but no one would give me a record deal, you see? So I had to create my own record label. When I wanted to put out my first film, I knocked on doors in Hollywood, I flew, I bought a ticket, flew over to Hollywood, knocked on doors of movie producers, I said, hey, listen, would you please produce my film? They all said what? No, no I could have gotten mad, I could have tried to take mine, but I went out there and learned how to make mine, you understand? Then when I wanted to write my first book, I wrote query letters, letters to all the publishers across this country, I said, hey, would you please put out my book? I have an idea, it's called The Hustler's Ten, would you please put out my book? I had the rejection letters on my desk to this day. They all said no, I couldn't find a way. So what did I do? You made a way. I made a way. Because I refuse to lose. to lose. And that's what I want to share with you today, how to make your way. If you refuse to lose. That's when I built Hustle University, that became my slogan. If you can't find a way, make a way. And I learned something very important that I wanted to share with you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls today. I learned that the difference between wealth and poverty is not determined by how much you have. It's more determined by what you do with what you've got. Let me say this again, right? Because some of us, we know we don't come from the best situations. We may not have a lot, but I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter what you have, because it's all about doing with what you've got. Now today, I'm going to show you how to do more with what you've got. And if you refuse to lose, this one is for you. So let's get it. Who's ready to get it? Raise your hand. All right, let's go. Let's go, see, because I want to make sure we're all clear. We have law enforcement in the house, and I want to make sure, and I'm glad we have law enforcement in the house. I'm so grateful. Fellas, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Let's give them another round of applause. Real talk. Real talk. All hustlers know police aren't our enemy. Let me just say this again. All real hustlers know that law enforcement is not our enemy. You understand? They're not like they, 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 can, they, they are our best friend and ally if you know how to play the what? Game. game and play this game to what? Win. Win. All right. So look, let me be clear. A hustle is an enterprise. Excuse me. To hustle means to act aggressively when it comes to your business. That's all it means. To hustle doesn't mean to sell drugs. To hustle doesn't mean to do anything illegal. All it means is to be aggressive about your business. Whatever your business is, if you're in school, you're in the business of getting education, and you need to be aggressive about that. You need to be on your hustle. If we have any athletes in this room? Has your coach ever told you to hustle? Yeah. 
all day. What do they mean? Go get it, son. Go get it, young lady. Make a way for yourself. You see, a hustler is not a drug dealer. Not, see, a hustler is just an enterprising person, someone determined to succeed, a go-getter. By a show of hands, is anybody in this room determined to succeed? Raise your hand. Do we have any go-getters in this room? Raise your hand. Or then give yourself another round of applause. We got a room full of hustlers. You ain't even know. That's okay. For those of you that didn't raise your hand, that's okay. Let me just say, hold on, let me be clear. You said I could keep it real with you, yes? You said I could keep it 100 with you, yes? Truth be told, not everybody's a go-getter. Not everybody's determined to succeed. Not everybody's enterprising. I'm hoping, though, for those of you that aren't today or right now, by the end of this presentation, it'll inspire you to be so. See, I've learned this. Hustle University is a self-help organization. We're not here to help people. We're here to help people help themselves. Let me be clear about what I'm saying. I'm not here to help anybody in this room. I'm here to help those of you that want to help yourself. Because you can't help nobody that don't want it. I speak before people all the time. Some people just don't want it. So if you don't want it, that's okay. I'm here for those that do. We don't give no handouts at Hustle University, but we will give you the hand up. Let me say that again. We don't give no handouts at Hustle University, but we will give you the hand up. I'm very clear about this language. So, for those of you that's ready to get it, let's do this. Let me talk about Hustlers Commandment number one. And by the way, for those of you right here, I just see y'all, y'all really giving me a lot of energy. I want to make sure I give y'all a, a quick bookmark. What's that's the Hustlers Ten Commandments on you? I got more, I got plenty more for people that's watching. You keep an eye out for it too. So let me just share with you some of the, I can't go through all ten. By the way, what time is, what time is this, my part over? I <laughs> appreciate you, young blood. Huh? What time is, what time do I have, what time is my section over? I need to know because I had to stay on track. Somebody let Somebody said take my time? Alright, here we go. Alright. So let me just talk about a few of them and if I have enough time I'll go through all of them. Hustler's commandment number one is one of uh, people's favorites, so I want to share this with you. Hustler's commandment number one, your network is your net worth. Now I want to share something very important to you. See, I've learned that I like money, and everybody says they like money, but I found that there's something more important than money in my life. What's more important to me than money is people. People are more important than money. I'm going to tell you why. See, people are, can be assets or a liability to you, meaning that people will either bring you up or they'll do what? Yeah. Take you down. Watch me now. See, you've heard adults tell you, be careful who you choose as friends. But let me be clear. Let me just play it to you another way. Your network is your net worth. And if you about money, truth be told, people are worth money if you choose correctly. See, life is a game, and who holds the controls? You do. Meaning that you have the power and the control to select who you want to be in your network, who you want to be in your circle. I've learned to get the squares out of my circle. I've learned to get the squares out of my circle. I'm out here getting it, out here hustling. I know some people don't want it. You a square, get out of my circle. You're not about this life. My network is my net worth. See, people are assets and liabilities. You hang around wealthy people, people that always get it, you get money. But you hang around four broke people, and guess what? You about to be the fifth. How people always borrowing money and they can't do what? Yeah. Can't pay it back, see? People are assets, they'll bring you up or they'll take you down, but that's dependent on how you choose. Question is, who are the people in your network? Think about this for yourself. Who are the people in your network? Who are the people you spend most of your time with? Are they bringing you up or are they taking you down? Think about this for a moment. You know, think about the three to five people that you spend most of your time with. Are they bringing you up? Are they about that life that you want? Or are they taking you down? Always getting in trouble. You see, there's an expression we know in the criminal justice world. It's called guilty by association. Anybody heard this term before? You see? For those that haven't, let me tell you something. This is real, and it goes along exactly with my lesson. Your network is your network. Tell you a quick story. I know a young person, 17 years old, spending the next 10 years of his life behind bars. Let me tell you, I'll say it again. We got any 17-year-olds in this room right now? Anyone 17? All right, 16-year-old. Anybody 16? All right. 
Bottom line, I know some young people, a, a young person is 17, doing 10 years hard time. That means he doesn't see the light of day until he's what? 27. And the, the hard, the difficult thing about this, he's in jail because of something someone else did. How does that happen? How, hold on. How do you go to jail doing 10 years and you wouldn't even do it? True story, let me tell you. Your network is your net worth. So this is my friend. Actually, the, the thing is, this young man was the son of a school principal. The son of a school principal doing 10 years behind bars for something he didn't even do. This is how it happened. Let me just take this chair right here, if you don't mind. Let me use a demonstration right here. Come on, you come on right here. What's your name? Devin. So we're going to pretend his name was Devin. Right? Everybody say, what's up, Devin? What's up, Devin? So Devin is the driver. Right? Uh, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, don't be shy. What's your name? Keelan. Everybody say, what's up, Keelan? All right. Bring your chair. Bring your chair. Back here, back here. What's your name? One more time. Everybody say what's up, Zaire. What's up, Zaire? I'm gonna use you. What's that? R R two L. Come on, we got one of the people from R two L. Let's give them another round of applause. Man, I can't move like that no more. I'm a whole head. All right, so this is how it happened. Devin and Keelan. So Devin's the driver, right? Keelan, we'll say Keelan is the principal's son. So Keelan and Devin, they go out, they're gonna to drive to the arcade at the mall, right? They have another friend named Zaire, so the three of them decided they're gonna go drive to the mall. Now, they also have another friend. What's your name? Kenyon, all right, so they have a friend named Kenyon. Now, these all, all the four of these kids, they grew up together, but everybody knows Kenyon is part of a gang. Anybody know someone part of a gang? Yeah. Okay, all right. So they all know, they all grew up together, right? Devin, uh, Keelan, Zaire, they all know Kenyon, Kenyon, Kenyon is part of a gang. But he's a homie, you know, he's from our neighborhood, he's all good, you know? So they all get in the car, they let Kenyon get into the car, okay? They start driving. Now what they don't know is Kenyon, because he's part of a gang on this particular day, Kenyon's been given an assignment. Kenyon is supposed to carjack someone today. Now they don't notice Kenyon doesn't get in the car and tell them, but Kenyon is out here on a mission to carjack someone. So the, the four of them drive up. Now they don't know what's going on. Just Kenyon's on his mission. It's a silent mission. They drive up to a red light. Kenyon gets out the car, goes to another car, starts breaking the window. Bam, bam, bam. Can't get in. So he runs back to the car, and then Devin drives off. Devin, drive off for us. Come on, come on. Pedal to the metal, my brother. Come on, hold on. Whip, whip around. Here we go. Right? Okay. Five minutes later, who chases them down? The police, right? Because they broke the law. This man tried to rob somebody, and he had a gun. So now, police pull them over. And who the police arrest? Do they arrest Devin? Or do they arrest, do they arrest the driver? Do they arrest these guys? Or do they arrest Kenyon, the, the gang member? They arrest all of them. Because we're guilty by our association. You see, in the eyes of the law, these three are part of this mission. Whether they knew it or not, because of their association with this young man, they are all guilty. So these three, doing 10 years, 25. Oh, oh, oh man. My point is, your network is your net worth, boys and girls, and you need to be very clear about who you spend your time with, who you allow to be in your circle. Let's give all these young men a round of applause. Thank you. Take your chairs back. I just wanted to demonstrate that story. Appreciate you for being a trooper. Watch out. There's a Watch that, let's get in front of the light. Pull that up, pull that out the way. Now I'll give you a quick example about how I utilize this. So let me take you back to time. You see, I don't like, one of the things at Hustle University we believe in is that if you're gonna talk the talk, you should also what? Walk the walk. All day, so let me be clear. I'm not preaching here to you. 
I'm not telling you something I don't do myself. I practice what I preach each and every day. I'm very intentional about the people I hang around with. I want people that's about money, people that's about getting it, people that's about education and getting this righteously. So, let me just share with you the story or the power of one. How one person can change everything in your life for better or for worse. Now that was a situation where that one person changed everybody's life for worse. But let me share with you how you can flip the situation and utilize the power of one or your network is your net worth. This is my friend Nancy. Everybody say, what's up, Nancy? What's up, Nancy? So Nancy, I met Nancy in Miami. Anybody here been to Miami before? So I was on Miami, South Beach, on my usual hustle, 2006. I had just written a book. I put out a film. I'm out here promoting my stuff. I'm telling everybody, this is who I am. This is what I do, right? Let everybody know, it's Hotel Chef, Hustle University. I'm about my business. I'm about getting mine. Sorry, young boy, I got you. All right, hey, hey, thank you for your, your volunteer. By the way, that's one right there for you. Who else, who else? Who else? Who was the other one? I'm missing somebody. Mm, slacking on his people. Sorry. Okay. All right. So I met Nancy in Miami on my hustle. Nancy was so impressed, she said, oh, said, wow, I love what you're doing, this whole Hustle University concept, these Hustlers Ten Commandments, I want to stay in, connect, in connection with you. I want us to be part of the same network. I said, sure, Nancy. I gave her my number. A few months later, Nancy calls me. She said, Hotel, I'm out here in Reno, Nevada, right next to Las Vegas. Has anybody here been to Las Vegas before? Not yet. Not yet. Yo, put it on your Hey, you know what? You might be able to do something, young blood. Las Vegas, I'll be there in two weeks again. Okay? Anyway, Las Vegas, put it on your list of places to go, amazing place. So, Reno, Nevada is right outside of Las Vegas. Nancy says, Hotep, I'm doing a conference in Reno, Nevada. I want you to come speak and talk about those hustlers, Ten Commandments. I said, sure, Nancy, but I have a problem. I don't have a lot of money, Nancy. Okay, I was being honest, 2006, I said, Nancy, I don't have a lot of money, I can't fly out there. She said, Hotep, don't worry about it. I'll pay your ticket. I'll put you in a hotel. I said, wow, Nancy, thank you. So she flew me to Reno, Nevada, put me in a hotel. When I got to the airport, they had a limousine waiting for me. I felt like a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? So I'm a celebrity now. They had a little sign waiting for me. I got in the limo, did the conference. At the conference, I met a guy named Omar Tari. Everybody say, what's up, Omar? Omar. Now, Omar was a is the refuse to lose instrumental I did put a hook on it, but I do have like verses for free, you know what I'm saying? If y'all want to write some stuff down, like, any lyricists in the house? Any lyricists in the house? Anybody want to know how to write songs? For real, y'all know how to write songs? No. No? Who say no? CBG. That's probably the one that can write the best song, right there. You gonna learn today. You gonna learn today. Alright, whatever you ready, boss. Let's get it. Turn up. Get this is like a little reference, a little reference track. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. How many of y'all refuse to lose this video? Where's your hand with me? I got a few of you. Yeah. 
freestyle, top of the dome. Okay. I'm up in here. Okay. Cody Cole, right. I made the beats. They sound so good. All right. I make it rain. Hey, all your hood. Passion the prince. He on the dancing. Yeah, diamond dancing. There ain't no romancing. Fuse to lose. I feel the wind. I go in and I refuse to trip. Now, like, you know what I'm saying? That was a little. Like that's just a little slow, right? Now, I'm not gonna stop it. What I want to also say is. I was just gonna do it. Is, um, this guy is a product of a program. He's a product of TBC. The first. to sit down with some state-of-the-art equipment was equipment that was purchased through what we call positive images which is now known as TBC he was one of the first you know um, students to really go through one of the first programs with TBC so I'm proud to say that because of the instructions that he received from a Jeffrey Williams also from an Alonzo Thompson he's been able to say that and I'm proud as a mother I'm very proud he doesn't have a criminal record. Now he might look real rough and real and look real hood, but you can't judge a book by its cover. You can pull this record all day, every day, and you won't find anything on this record. It's not. It's nothing wrong with getting stopped by a cop, but don't let them detain you because you have something on your record or you're riding dirty, all that stuff. So I can support it if you're doing the right thing. And I also want to say, Miss Sally Brisbane. He got in trouble a lot in school for beating on the desk. He had to go see this principal every week in school. But because, because he has been able to maintain himself, they're going to be going into a partnership with Midtown Studios right here in downtown Lakeland. And this anthem, this anthem that you're going to be able to construct today, you're going to be able to put, um, put it to music in the studio. And if you could do it today, you'll be able to perform it at the rally tonight. I want to just break real quick. We have some other instrumentals to let you listen to, but I want um, the panelists again to introduce themselves and tell you what their field of expertise is in music. I'm gonna start, you want me to start with you? I'm gonna start with um, Mr. Ray Allen. All right, so. Um, field of expertise, I think just like everyone else, um, having a huge love for music, for hip hop, um, everything from breaking to just the history. Uh, I think it's hard to, it's hard to communicate the art form if you don't truly understand the art form. So um, for me, a lot of my expertise has come from just studying it, um, being embedded in it. Uh, and then um, to me, I'm extremely excited to see what you all get to lay down, just this opportunity. Uh, we need more things like this, so just big ups to Refuse to Lose, uh, TBC, I mean, everything that's going on, this is, this is the positive stuff that's needed. I go by the name um, CBG. Um, it stands for? It stands for Chosen by God. Um, the reason why I do this is because I feel like I'm a better person when I do music. It keep me off the streets. It keep me from doing um, negative stuff, a lot of stuff, and like it helps me because I work on, I write every day, and I work on my stage presence, and I try to get better and better. And like I'm really excited to see what y'all are able to do, and um, I'm hoping to see y'all do what y'all do. My name is Brandon. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to be up here or not, but I got I got something to say though. I'm the best freestyler in this room. My name is Jalen. Uh, I really don't think I have a good expertise in rapping. I feel like I'm a rookie, but you know I'm not here to represent. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 My name is Isaiah. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna spit some bars, I guess. <laughs> 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 
my name is Kenyon. That's my, that's my brother Kalen over there, my, my friend Cameron, um, our dance crew, as y'all saw. Um, our name is Double KC, and we, we travel around and we dance, and uh, a lot of what we dance to has to do with the beat. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with the lyrics as well, um, but the lyrics does, you know, they, they play a big part in um, the music that we listen to today. So, I don't think I'm going to be doing any freestyling myself <laughs> as far as rapping goes, but um, I definitely just want to say as far as, you know, what's our passion, um, anything you guys chase in your life, just do it for you. Don't do it for anybody else. We had a couple more. We had another young man to join the um, panel. It's Peso. He's uh, also an artist. He's going to be performing at the rally. Thank you. It's that speaker. <laughs> we good? Yes. What's up? My bad. Uh... We're still in the line of speaker. <laughs> we good? Testing, testing. All right. Y'all good? Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you, Ms. Lynn, for um, having me be a part. I was late due to work, so I'm glad I was able to get off. i um, still get here, but my name is Caso. It stands for Created As Sharon C. Wright only. My real name is Sharon. Um, some of y'all might know me as Coach C. Wright, or just the rapper. It's all good. I see a lot of kids I coach and kids that, um, in my youth group. I'm just a, I'm an artist. I'm a creative, and I love to see young people be everything they were created to be, called to be. So I want y'all to believe in y'all self, and every day you walk around, wear that as your identity. You know, because that's when you find out who you truly are in God. Look at <laughs> My name is Hotep, Hustle University. Uh, my expertise is in hustling and making a way. That's it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all, Hotep, um, he probably said, well, they have me up here. I have a lot of respect for this man. I met him probably four years ago. And I've done a lot of research and I've heard a lot of testimonies about um, the programs that he's brought into, um, into um, Florida. He deals a lot with the Preventing Crime Conference and that's a national, a national conference. And he's been invited to speak in many, many cities. So I do have a lot of respect for him. And I want him to be here just as some wisdom to this table of young, young artists that are inspiring to be artists. It's nothing wrong with music, but just if music is going to be your passion, you need to make you need to make it count. Don't let money control what you do. Don't let money dictate the type of music that you perform. But make sure that you're able to do something that at the end of the day you'll be proud of, that you can let your kids and your kids' kids listen to. With um, that being said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start. We're gonna, we we want to hear the second the second because I need you to start hearing this because you're gonna write in just a minute. The biggest part of this is to write. But these these young folks around this table. They're going to be, um, they're going to help guide the writing because they have expertise in putting some lyrics on paper. And this is a competition, a friendly competition. We look like we may be able to break it off in about maybe three groups, clean, about three groups. And you're, you can go group one, group two, group three. And you can give your group a name as um, long as you're writing. Um, and you cannot, you cannot, when you're writing, you cannot, um, it cannot have profanity. It cannot have explicit lyrics. What's explicit lyrics? Explicit lyrics is things that um, we can't, you don't get to play on the radio. You know, we don't want swearing, we don't want cursing, we don't want um, game symbols and signs. When you have an opportunity to perform it at the rally, we don't want you throwing up the game symbols and signs because trust me, we have people around here that know what those symbols mean. And if we see them, it won't get played. You know, um, the city controls what goes out so it won't, Nobody will see it. Nobody but what's in here. But uh, please, please adhere to those rules. If you choose to, in your lyrics, to put something about Lakeland, that's great. But you must talk about positive things. The hook will already be, already be pre-recorded, and it will say "Refuse to Lose." Here is the second, the second. So if you like the first beat, you kind of think in your head, we're gonna have a group that's gonna want to go with the first one. We have a group that's gonna want go with the second one, and then we have a group that go with the third. Or you may all write to the same the same beat. It doesn't matter because it's going to be different. Can we hear the second one? I 
solemnly swear right here in the air. I refuse to look at ya. I refuse to look at ya. Hey, I solemnly swear right here in the air. I refuse to lose, hey, I refuse to lose, hey, hey, hey. I solemnly swear right here in the air. Hey, 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 We got one more. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. We gonna get the third beat in a few minutes. I think the difference between the second and the third, you heard the um the the little what was it? Yeah, Coney Cone, you know, that, that, a lot of artists, a lot of artists put what they call a signature on their music so that, you know, folk can't copy and record over. So all that was, was his dad, his dad's voice, when he just, you know, um, recorded over his dad's voice, it's a signature. So when you hear, you can automatically know it's something that he made. Um, a lot of times it'll just say Coney Cone Production. And you may hear that throughout, or they may run a, a long siren sound. That's all the artists are doing. They're, they're putting their signature on something so you can't record over it. Um, and we're gonna talk about, you know, recording over it. You, if, you pop, if you produce music, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna make sure you copyright everything. Miss Queen and her organization um, is, you know, is set up to work with you know, young artists to teach them how to copyright their music. It is very important, no matter what you do, whether it's your poetry, whether it's your original dance moves, um, whatever it is, you have to copyright it or trademark it. If you don't know how to go through the process of doing that, um, we have, where's Miss Jennifer? She, she's still in here? Well, we have a young lady that um, she works with us on doing a lot of those things. So we're trying to build a system so that our youth, and when you do camp next year, you'll be able to go into a studio next year. We want to take you to a local studio, then maybe take you over to Full Sail in Orlando, where they would allow you to work with state, state, state of the art equipment for free to come in and do your stuff. So we want to provide the platform for for young folk, but we need you to give us something in return. And giving us something in return, you need to give us some good music, something that we'll be proud of, and something that we can promote later on. So with that being said, we're getting ready to, uh, I don't know if we got that third beat, but we got that first beat. How many like the first beat? How many like the first beat? Okay, if you like the first beat, um, you might work as a group together. So if you can come all the way, just come over to the side real quick. If you like the first beat, We'll let you hear it again before you start writing. Um, you come over to a group, come over to my right, over to my right group over here. Okay, how many like the second beat? Okay, if you like that second beat, um, you come over to my left side over here. Now, if you want just the instrumental where you want to create your own hook, it's very easy to do that. He can do that right now. You can create your own hook, whatever. So, how many of you feel like you're good at dancing? Good at dancing. Well, I need you to listen. I need you to clap if you can hear my voice. Clap if you can hear my voice. Now, these groups will also need someone that can dance. I got background dancing. And we have our dancers that's going to teach you some moves. And designers, art grab designers. The designers can do the, the logos or whatever, art, artwork. Now we're trying to, we're trying to, um, like Hotep say, listen, listen, we're trying to make a way. We want you to, you go, you, you're going to create a business over here. If you just know how to draw, you don't know how to write, you don't know how to dance, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do group one, I'm going to do there, I'm going to draw. We got some paper over here, you're going to draw a logo for them. You're going to tell us about what makes group one, you're going to be group one over here, what makes group one better than group two? And, and everybody that's sitting in the pews or the seat, I guess you go, are y'all you, are you gonna, gonna write? Be a part of it? No? Okay. 
Okay. Even if you don't want to write, you can decide, okay, I want to sit with group one, I want to sit with group two. You don't have to, but I, I want you to participate in something. Again, we have those that's, that might want to learn some dance music, dance moves to, uh, to what were you the second one? The second beat, the first beat over here, your group two. I'm giving you group two, and you, you're going to do the first beat. You might have someone that's going to create some dance moves. Yes, young man. Uh, this young man said he want to make his own hook. You can do it. What you need, baby, what you need to do is you need to go to the stage. You need to go to the stage. Come this way. Anybody want to create your own hook? All right, y'all. All right, we have Sharon and um, Ryan. Y'all keep it cool that y'all be doing this, okay?